Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another oscilloscope from Tektronics. Well, not just any other oscilloscope, but a very, very tiny little service scope called 213 DMM. Digital multimeter. So this is not only an oscilloscope, but this is also a digital multimeter. Isn't that something? So the two little metal things down here, that is actually for a strap you can have around your neck. So this is hanging on your belly. <laughs> Can you imagine that? So you got both hands free to do all sorts of service and measuring around what's going on. And uh, so there's actually a big hole in the middle here where it contains batteries. So it's battery operated and then you can charge the thing as well. This one is a little bit modified. It was uh, broken and repaired by the previous owner. It is in a little bit of an old crusty state, but of course I'm going to fix that a little bit. There's a loose connection here in the scope input, so I can't get anything in there. I hear some loose items in here, so that is why I opened this thing. thing I didn't power it up, but I saw it worked when I bought this one at an, a flea market, at a local flea market a few weeks ago. So I know this actually works. Or at least it boots up and power or shows something on the screen. Obviously it's not going to to show, to measure anything before I repair the, the cable here. So there's this little special cable. And this attaches the the probe, this is the original probe with this little bit funny connector. It just goes here. And then the idea is, as far as I know, you just wrap this around the back. And you also got the mains cable or the for the for the charger, and you also wrap this around here for for wiring. So there's order in your wires. Other than that, it's uh, quite normal. You got all the Voltages per division, position, power on and off, and input AC, la 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 la. All that is super normal for a scope. And um, and here we here we select between digital multimeter or the oscilloscope. So so how about we just power this up? And see what happens. Yeah, I got all the little boss buttons and stuff. For this, that was needed a little bit of service. This is the little piece of plastic for, for the back here. So I expect this to be using a very, very low power consumption because it's normally running off batteries. So let's turn on the power. It's three watts. I see the LED goes on here. Let me... What else do I see? Oi! Did you see that? Okay. We've got some something is going on here, right? So this is the time base. And that is the sensitivity. So so far it looks like it's alive. Got a little bit of loose 
quite just that pay that is something I need to work a little bit on milliamps and then it shows something so what is that that is intensity okay aha so that's probably the the trigger okay we got a little bit of loose pots here uh. <laughs> all right I figured this out it, it was the the trigger and the auto trigger and this was of course in the wrong setting so that means uh, playing around with the position here that will change the trigger so now all that works so let's try the digital multimeter mode look at that isn't that just amazing Ooh, what is that so when you're in armis mode it does like that so that is milliamp mode Okay, and the dot moves as well. That is amazing. I love it. So it really works. And the cool thing is, you would imagine that there's like a little CPU in here or something like that. But this thing was designed in 1975. So that was the first release. And the last release is from 1989 or something around that. So, there's no CPU in this one. <laughs> there's actually a uh, two chip solution for this. One is the analog to digital converter and the digital output drives a character generator that draws the image here on the screen uh, with the result from the AD converter. So that is how it's done. And I think we should open and find this uh, custom chip because it's probably going to look real nice. Now I'm inside this beautiful unit. As you see, it's very, very compact design. Let me get some light in here so we can see what we're doing. So that is the end of the CRT. Here's of course the high voltage converter. 360 volts, that's all. Really? And see a little bit of ICs and such. Originally, this hole holds well, this, those two pieces of plastic here, they're used to hold two rechargeable cells. So that's the battery in here. And then there is a charger somewhere. I think it's in here. This is where mains come in. And this is uh, heavily modified. And I think this is because the power supply in here is not working. So what they did is... They put in a uh, normal wall plug power supply and adjusted that one to give the correct voltage and that is what it's running off. But this, this, this thing here is just lying loose in here. So, I mean, it's not a very beautiful modification. I will call this a five minute fix. And I mean, the thing is running and it is working from this. I would not be super proud of this solution, but also it's really difficult to figure out how to mount this. Maybe you could 3D print a little piece of plastic that screws in here and hold this so it would be super nice and beautiful, right? That's more more like it. <laughs> or just a few cable ties on the, 
you know, use the holes and use some, this. This you cannot have. Then you're not done. Okay. Whatever you say. I mean, we got PCBs all over the place. <laughs> it's like really, really compact. The CRT is mounted in some plastic or rubber plastic kind of that presses in here. And this also makes it really, really difficult to disassemble because uh, it's super stuck all the way around here. I thought I was going to break something when I was taking this apart. And those switches are the classic Tektronix switches, like you have seen in many other of their scopes. And they occupy this entire space here. Well, we know those are really, really good. Oh yeah, let's let's see if we can get this all the way around out. So this is how it's assembled. This is the bottom part. And if you see those pieces of very, very hard plastic, that just sticks up and locks itself into the holes here. There are no screws for that. Let me see if I can, he says, oh, here we got 1200 volts, so that is more like it. So I maybe shouldn't touch anything because it's not that long ago I powered it up. Oh, look at that. So we got a PCB in here and then there's another one, actually two stacked PCBs here because you can see more components here, right? What is that? Yes, definitely. It was two stacked PCBs here, so it's very, very highly super stacked. Oh my god. That is impressive. Compact. Yes, and here is the character generator, by the way. That one. And that looks super duper nice, so I really wanted to show you. Can I maybe... I think we got connectors all the way around here. So I should be able to lift this up. But I think I need two hands to do that, so... Let me try and play a little bit with that. So now it's all coming to pieces. I had to remove the two nuts here of the power supply. And then I am definitely inside. <laughs> you see this power supply here. Oh, yo, yo, pretty, pretty cool. And what do you know? That is the character generator chip. Isn't that just beautiful? It's definitely a super custom chip. Oh, yeah. The PCB is from 1974, and uh, I think the the first version of the published material is from 1975. So of course the PCB is made a little bit before. I think this one is the um, digital uh, to analog or analog to digital converter to the, the dig digital multimeter chip. So, and, and by the way, this is a multi layer PCB. Look at the two traces here at my thumb. And look here. It looks a little bit like they are on that side, but that is not the case. That is inner track. So we got four layers in that PCB. So so that was also very, very high take in 1974. This one is actually loose, so I should have a look. Hang on a second. Yeah, with this connector removed, it is now super easy. Oh yeah, by the way, see? 
the two black wires doesn't matter what kind of what way I flip that connector so that's pretty good Ooh, empty so that is where the broken power supply would have been and this is what they replaced and since this one is so compact even a brand new one wasn't able to replace that one so that is the ac line yeah this is the ac and battery charger that was inside here i thought that was the high voltage thingy so where the heck is that then Mm hmm it's super secret it can only be in there right because there isn't really anything left anywhere i don't see any nasty high voltage stuff voltage division Resistors interconnects in Teflon. Nice. A little fuse in a socket. Oi, 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 oi. I mean, this unit is just pure joy and beauty. I am super impressed about the how compact this is. And here it is, I found the fault. So this is the scope input. Look at that. So where is that supposed to be mounted? Down here is a, probably a little pad. Yes, there is a. That is where it was supposed to be soldered to that little point here. Can't really see it that well. So that broke off. Well, well, that should be possible to fix. And then we'll be up and running. Ha ha! I really like it when stuff is working. So that is going to be a great, great day. And then I could probably figure out how to mount this. Just, I mean, a little bit. So it's not hangly dangly around here. Nah. What are you? And, but if you take the volume of the content in here, I mean, if you're really, really smart, don't you think it should be possible to put this in here? In that one? I mean, it's more or less the same volume, but... Yeah... I can't be bothered totally rearranging all this, making a new PCB for that, and... Oh, uh, no, not so funny. I wanted this to be a fast, fast... Amplifier board. And all the good stuff. You probably also noted all the... Transistors there in sockets. Look at that. So there's like funny little plastic inserts. See? So you can move all the transistors. <laughs> transistors in sockets and whatnot. Here's one transistor that's not mounted. I've been poking around a little bit more inside this unit and that is the volt selection so this is probably the input and I don't know if you can see this that resistor is not looking too good And then the input goes down to some diodes. 
and then I don't know probably a little field effect transistor amplifier and stuff down there I can see some goodies so I mean I need to go and service here if it's not measuring anything after I fixed that one and by the way I see the high voltage capacitors and all that stuff here so this is where all the nasty high voltage stuff is made it actually gets more and more funny all you have to do is just lift everything up here and then you can take it to pieces real easy and then there's just this wire here and red is at the top so I mean I can unplug that one and then pull this board out as well because I need to service this one. Oh, by the way I was looking a little bit more at the multi-layer board here and look what I find layer identification here but that is now very interesting one two and bottom is three hey a three layer board how is that possible how did they do that then that is a very special process obviously the first multi-layer boards that was a very very special process so but there you have it now you have seen it ah. so now the input board is out and it's much easier to see what we're doing see the input resistor here is 12 kilo ohm so this is actually an orange it's not so easy to see here but it is orange and if I measure this it is indeed 12 kilo ohms but I mean this resi uh, resistor did really receive a lot of pain so I better replace that and now it's super easy to access and I can do a proper solder job so why not fix that now right and I can also see the previous owner didn't take it apart as much as I did so they were not able to do a proper solder job on that wire and this is of course why it is broken but now it's super easy and I can do it right so I'll definitely uh, fix that so this is a very special feed through input capacitor so the the input signal here goes through this capacitor look at that and there isn't any DC connection between the two points here and that's probably a shield for the capacitor and it's only 12 nanofarad so that is a little bit weird also I mean if this is the only input as you can see here that means this scope will only have AC possibilities. It can't measure DC. But this is not what I see here. I see DC as well. Volts can be AC or DC. And it can even do milliamps, right? Or when it's doing that. See, milliamps and ohms. Then you access the banana plugs here at the side so that is not done via the the probe that's only the voltages but it should also be able to do DC and how the heck is that possible if DC can't go through that capacitor so that means I really need to consult the schematics because that is not correct or look what I see now when in doubt look closer there is a line you can see it now I guess there is a line in one of the inner layers from that point that goes this way that means 
the electronics will be able to access the DC point. And that solves the mystery. Whew. I'm happy I see that. So there was a solution. So this is, of course, also a three, one, two. Oh, this is a four layer one. See? We got four here. And it, from this side, you can even see one, two, and then three. How, how cool is that? We got a four layer board here. Now I want to see the other boards as well, right? So. <laughs> that is also a four layer board. And here you can even see the layers. They're in different colors. Because it's very transparent, the, the glass fiber. This is made from mine. Okay, cool. That explains everything. Here is C101. That special capacitor, the shielded capacitor I'm talking about. And that is definitely 20 nano. So that is correct. Great. And that is the 12K resistor that was uh, very hot. And like you see here, it, that must have been a very high frequency signal, right? How is it possible to make this hot? And this one is working. And then we got two diodes to the positive and negative six and a half volts. And then it goes into the dual gate uh, amplifier section. So I want to measure those two diodes are not shorted as well, right? But I want to change this uh, resistor. See, that was really easy. And that looks nice and beautiful. And the input cable is soldered, so yeah, I will assemble it and let's see if it works. Oh, yes. See? Here in scope mode, I even connected my signal generator directly to the input now. And I know it's soldered all the way through here and nothing. No matter what I do, no matter what I play around with, there is no input whatsoever. So that means uh, it's the field effect transistors. They're probably broken. Somebody connected this to some high voltage, high frequency stuff to to burn that. So that's just too bad for now. I can't waste any more time on on this uh, right now. So it will probably go in storage for all infinity. Uh, what else did I find out? If I go into digital multimeter, and if I go into Volts doesn't work, obviously, because that goes also through the normal input. But if I go to ohms, then I need to use that input, right? And look at that. If I see that's open. Ooh -hoo -hoo. So yeah, it seems to be alive in ohms, and I can select the different ohms ranges like that. We got a little bit of some funny characters sometimes. <laughs> Look at that. It's not 100% perfect. That's just probably the way it was already from the beginning. I still think it is super, super nice, this uh, scope multimeter. Anyway, so why are you doing that now? Oh, look at that. I can, that is interesting. So I can actually use it. Hang on a second. Ah, that is cool. You can use the vol the ohm meter input 
And then you can get all your curves on it. This is one kilohertz. Ha ha. That was funny. And this is the trigger. It's doing some sort of funny things here. Yeah, that should be the level. Ugh. All right, so we are back happy again. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for watching, and uh, please come back again tomorrow. See ya. Bye.